Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Think 2019. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE here in Moscone North at IBM Think 2019. I'm Stu Bin and my co-host for this segment is Dave Vellante. We have four days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this big show. Happy to welcome back to the program Jason McGee, who is an IBM fellow and he's the Vice President and CTO of Cloud Platform at IBM. Jason, great to see you. Great to have, be here. All right, so Jason, uh, we, we spoke with you at KubeCon. Yep. Uh, as uh, we were saying, it's a slightly different audience. A it's bit. a little bit bigger here. Yep. Um, not as many hoodies and jeans and t-shirts. Yep. Uh, a little bit more of a business crowd, uh, but yep. we're still talking about cloud. So yep. uh, for, 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 let's talk about you know, kind of your role here at the show. What, what, what's going to keep you busy all week? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, cloud is a huge part of what's going on, I think. Uh, talking a lot about uh, both public and private, about hybrid, and some of our multi-cloud management capabilities, you know, my role role as the leader of cloud platform. I'm talking a lot about uh, platform as a service and Kubernetes and containers and Istio and kind of all the new technologies that people are using to help build the next generation of applications. All right, so we've had a few interviews today already talk about some of the multi-cloud pieces. We yep. had Dan Berg on earlier to talk about yep. Kubernetes. So first you're going to help correct the things that he got yeah, wrong. Yeah, anything Dan got um, wrong, I'll And fix. service meshes have been a, a really hot conversation uh, the, the last year or so. Yeah. Uh, Istio, Envoy and the like. Uh, it, 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 talk to us about where IBM fits into this discussion of service meshes. Yeah, so you know, I think we've been on this um, kind of journey as an industry over the last few years to build a new app platform. Um, and service meshes kind of fit the part of the problem, which is how does everything talk to each other and how do I actually control that and get visibility into it. Um, you know, IBM has had a founding role in that project. Uh, my team at IBM and Google got together with the guys at Lyft to create Istio. Um, what I'm most excited about, I think, in 2019 is that's, that technology is really transitioning into something people are using in production in their applications. It's becoming more of kind of the default stack uh, that people are using. Uh, really helping them do security and visibility and control over their applications. Yeah, uh, w w one thing uh, that I heard just from the community and wonder if you mm -hmm. can tell me is, uh, you know, Istio itself, uh, the governance model is still yeah. not fully into CNCF. Yeah. I, I heard a little bit of hesitancy on some Envoy, uh, of course, out there yeah. uh, and the like. So, you know, where yeah. are we? What needs to happen to kind of move yeah. that forward? Yeah, you're right. So we're not there quite yet. Um, we're pushing hard to make that happen, certainly from an IBM perspective. Um, we absolutely believe that CNCF is the right home for Istio, as you mentioned, some of the pieces like Envoy are there already. Um, you know, CNCF has done such a tremendous job over the last 18 months, really rallying all the core technologies that make up this new cloud native platform that we're building. Uh, and so Istio is, um, you know, out there it's 1.0, it's mature, people are using it, you know, that last step needs to happen to get it into the community. So, I have to ask you, so I mean, things move so fast in yeah. this world. You know, we go back to the OpenStack days, and that was going to change the world, and then <laughs> Docker, and yeah. containers, and then Kubernetes, and Istio. And I, I can't help but thinking, okay, this isn't the end of the line. Sure. What's, Jason, what's the underlying trend here that's going on in the coding world? Yeah, sure, I'll put it in, maybe in my own lens, given my history, right. you know, I'm an old WebSphere app server guy, you know, that's yeah. the first half of my career I built that. Um, and I think the fundamental problem we're solving is actually exactly the same. It's like, how do you build a platform that lets app developers focus on building their apps and not focus on all the plumbing and the infrastructure for running those apps? And we did that 20 years ago in Java with app servers, and we're doing it now with cloud, and we're doing it on top of containers. Um, things like Istio, like, while they're important in their own right, they're really actually more important because they're just part of this bigger puzzle that we're putting together. And I think for the average software developer, they shouldn't really have to care about what part is Istio, and what part is, is Kubernetes, and which part is Knative. Like all of that needs to come together into a single platform that they can use to build their apps and run them securely, right? And, and I think Istio is just recognizing that next piece. You know, I think we've all agreed on containers and Kubernetes, we all talk about it all the time, and Istio is that next layer. Like how do I secure and control things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so you, you teed it up nicely because we want app developers just to be able to worry about the applications. Right. So you mentioned Knative, the whole serverless trend is one yeah. where, you know, the, the idea of course is I shouldn't have to worry about the infrastructure layer, it right. should just be taking care of me. We've talked about it for PaaS for a number of years, there, there's right. various ways to do it. Um, so at uh, KubeCon, and we've been looking for about the last year now, you know, where does you know, Kubernetes and serverless, how do they fit together? And yeah. Knative looks to be a piece as to how to bridge uh, some of those yeah, worlds. So absolutely. where yeah. are we and, and what, what's, what's IBM doing there? 
So I think uh, you rightly say that they should fit together. Mm -hmm. right? Like they're all part of this continuum of how developers build apps. And you know, if you look at serverless applications, you know, there's the serverless dimension. I'm personally not a big serverless terminology fan. I think they're more about event-oriented computing and how do you have a, a good model for event-oriented systems. Um, today, um, with Kubernetes and Istio, I think we've built the base platform. I think with Knative, what we're doing is bringing serverless and also just um, kind of 12-factor applications into the fold in a more formal way. Um, and when we get all those pieces together and we integrate them, I think then developers really unleash to just build their application in whatever way makes the most sense for what they're doing. And some things like serverless, event-oriented, it's going to be easier, and some problems, straight containers will be an easier way to do it. Yeah. So you, know, you say you don't like serverless, uh, you, you like event better, a function. Yeah, functions, yeah. So, so explain that to the audience. Like why, why should we care and why is that different? How is that different? Yeah, I think uh, for a couple things. First off, the idea of serverless applies much more broadly than just what we think of as kind of function-based programming. You know, like any system that does a good job of managing and masking the infrastructure below me, you could consider a serverless system, right? Um, so when you just say serverless, it's kind of like secondhand for functions, I'd rather we just kind of say functions, <laughs> because that's actually a different programming model. Right where you kind of trigger off of events and you write a, a, a functional piece of code and the system takes care of those details. You could argue that Cloud Foundry is a serverless system in the sense that you just, as a developer anyway, you just CF push your code and it just runs and it scales and it does whatever you need, right? Um, so part of my mission, you know, part of what I look at a lot is how do we bring all these things together in a way that is easy for the developer to stay focused. Istio is a great example. You know, one of the things we're announcing this week is managed Istio support as part of our Kubernetes service. Mm. What does that really mean? It means the developer can use the capability of Istio without worrying about how do I install and run Istio, which they don't really care about. They just really care about how they get value out of its capabilities. Mm. Yeah, that, that's one of the things that having watched uh, all, all these, uh, you know, Kubernetes, Istio and the like is how many companies really need to understand how to build this and run this right. because right. can I just get it delivered to me as a service? Yeah. And, and therefore that, you know, that whole, you know, what do I want out of cloud? I want a simple model to be able to consume, not necessarily, uh, I want to build the stuff that's important to me right. and not, not the rest of the stuff. Yeah, and I think it. if you look at the industry, there's really, I think, kind of two dominant consumption models that have actually emerged for people really using these things. There's uh, public cloud platforms who are delivering things as a service. And then there's uh, kind of platform software stacks like OpenShift, like IBM Cloud Private, which take all of these pieces and bring them together. And I think for most developers, they'll consume in one of those two ways because they don't really want the task of how to assemble all these pieces together. Yeah, to, to go back to the serverless piece, like what one distinction I heard made is, okay, if I can really scale it down to zero, if I don't need to manage yeah. it, then that can be serverless, but yeah. uh, the, there's, there's alternatives coming out there like what Knative has to, right. if I want to run this in my own environment, it's not serverless because right. I do need to, it might be functions, but I need to manage this environment. The infrastructure is my responsibility, not some service provider. Right, and I think if you look at serverless, to me, I always, personally, I always think of it in kind of two scenarios. There's like serverless as a programming model and a technology, and yeah. serverless as a business model, yeah. right? As a consumption model for payment. Um, I think this, the programming model part's applicable in lots of cases, including private clouds and in cluster. The business model part is, a, I think, frankly, a unique to public cloud thing that says I can just pay for the milliseconds of CPU compute that I'm using and nothing more. That's well, a good thing for right? consumers. It's a good right? thing for the yeah. consumer. It's actually a good thing for cloud providers, too, because yeah. it gives us a way to reuse our infrastructure in creative ways, yeah. right? Um, but I think first and foremost, we have to get more adoption of it as a programming model that developers use to build their applications and do it combined with other things. Because I think most realistic apps aren't going to all be serverless or all be Kubernetes, they're going to be some mix. Yeah, uh, right, it, it, like everything else, it's, it's you know, what percentage of the applications will this take over? We had this discussion right. with virtualization. We, we've been having this discussion with cloud and serverless, right. of course, is, is pretty early in that environment. Um, Knative, did I hear, is there, there's some announcements this week that IBM's yeah. making? Yeah, so, so Knative, obviously, as a project is kind of much earlier in its maturation than something like Istio is, uh, but we're making that available as part of our um, public and private clouds as well. Uh, really so people can get started with the ideas of Knative, they can have an easy way to get that environment stood up and they can start building those applications. Um, and so that's now something that you know, we're kind of bringing out as we work in the community to actually mature the project itself. Excellent. Um, one of the things everybody's, of course, keeping an eye on, I, I saw Arvind Krishnan talking mm -hmm. about the cloud strategy, is how Red Hat fits into all sure. of this. So we know you can't talk about kind of post-acquisition, but yeah. 
Red Hat's involved in Knative, they're involved in a lot of the services. Eight million missions. developers, yeah. that's got to be exciting for you. Yeah, it is, and, yeah. and obviously, like, look, we've been partners for many years. Yep. Um, you know, in, on the open source side of things, we've worked closely with Red Hat for a long time. We actually view the world in very similar ways. You know, we, like you said, we're working on Knative together, we've been working on OpenWhisk together, we obviously work in Kubernetes together. So personally, I'm pretty excited about um, uh, them coming into IBM, assuming that acquisition goes through. Um, they, you know, they fit into our strategy really well, and I think they'll just kind of enhance what we've all been working to build. Mm. Right. Right. All right, uh, Jason, what else, uh, what, what should be looking? You talked about the maturity of these solutions. Uh, give us some guideposts for the people watching the industry that we should be looking at as 2019 rolls through. Yeah, so I think there's a couple things. Uh, you know, I think this unified application platform notion that we've been kind of touching on here, I think will really come into its own in 2019, and, and I would really love to see people kind of embrace that idea that we don't need three container stacks. We're not trying to, to build these different things. You know, one of the things I'm kind of excited about with Knative is by bringing serverless and 12-factor into Kubernetes, it allows each of those frameworks to be kind of the best they can be at their part of the problem space and not solve unrelated problems. You know, I looked at the kind of serverless versus kube camps. You know, the purists in both think all problems will be solved in their camp, which means they try to solve all problems. Like, how do I do stateful systems in serverless and how do I bring in storage and solve all these things that maybe containers is better at? Um, so I think this unification that um, I see happening will allow us to have really high efficiency 12-factor and serverless in the context of Kube and will change how people uh, are able to use these platforms. Um, I think 2019 is really about adoption of all of this stuff. You know, we still are really early, frankly, in the kind of container adoption landscape. And I think most people in the broader industry are just kind of getting their feet wet. They all agree with it, they're all trying, but they're just starting. And, you know, there's a lot of interesting work to do yeah. together. J Jason, are, are there any, uh, anything that are holding people back? Anything that you, what, you know, what, what do you see as uh, some of the things that might help accelerate some of this adoption? Yeah, I think one of the things that's holding people back is um, just the diversity of options that exists in the cloud native space. I mean, you guys have all probably seen like the CNCF landscape chart. Oh, like, yeah. I've never <laughs> seen so many icons on something in my life. <laughs> That's really frightening for the average enterprise to look at a picture like that and go like, which of these things are going to be useful, which are going to exist in a year, like how do I bet make bets on yeah. these things? So I think that's actually held people back a lot. Um, I think the kind of agreement around Kubernetes that happened in the last 18 months or so was really liberating for a lot of people. It helped them kind of move forward there. I think if we can all agree on a few more pieces around Istio, or around Knative, like it'll really help kind of unlock people and get them trying. Actually doing it, I don't think is anything more than picking a project and starting. Like I think a lot of enterprises overanalyze everything and they just need to pick something and go and learn and they'll find. So pick some narrow use case. Yeah, pick, pick an app, simple. pick a use case and go do it, yeah. right? And you'll learn and you'll figure out how it works for you and then you do the second and the fourth and the tenth and before you know it, you're on your way. Yeah. Um, that's what we did at IBM ourselves and you know now we're running our whole entire public cloud on top of Kubernetes. Uh, Jason, and any any learnings from that kind of experience that you share to users as uh, as they look forward? Yeah, we, we had a lot of learnings from from using Cube. One is we could run a heck of a lot more diverse workloads than we thought when we started. You know, we're running databases, we're running data warehouses, we're running machine learning, we're running blockchain, we're running every kind of application you didn't think could ever work on containers on containers. Uh, so one of the lessons was it's much more flexible than you think it is, right? Um, the other thing is you really have to rethink everything, like the way you do compliance, the way you do security, the way you monitor the system, like all of those things need to change because the, the, the underlying kind of container system enables you to solve them in such a powerful way. And so if you go into it just thinking, oh, I'm just going to change this one part of how I do apps and the rest won't change, I think you'll find in a year that you're changing the whole operating model around the, your environment. Mm. Well, Jason, rethink everything. We're here at IBM Think yep. 2019. Thanks as always for catching up with yeah, us thanks on for having everything me. going on. Thanks for Dave Vellante, I'm Stu Miniman. We've got three more days of live coverage here from Moscone North. If you're here, stop by and say hi or reach out to us on the interwebs. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE.